six of our new year Veterinarian series. My name is Jan Brück and I'm from Germany, I think you can hear it, and I'm a student for one semester here in the Mass Communication class. And our topic tonight is project management in new media. Therefore, we invited a senior, uh, senior consumer and social marketing manager from SAP, <laughs> and she talked about what it, uh, what it takes to manage new media projects and her views on what it takes to manage social media and online community projects. Before SAP, she worked for Yahoo, Logitech, eBay, Oracle, and she made experiences <laughs> in Europe, the Middle East, and Latin America. Further, she has content management, client service, online commerce, and community development skills. She has repeated success in cultivating and managing online communities and market products, bringing social awareness, increase revenue, and reduce support, uh, reduce support costs. So I'm very proud to present our first female speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Leila Sabuhan Taubi. And by the way, she's a mother, and that alone is project management enough. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jan, and uh, thank you so much, San Jose State University, for inviting us. Um, really excited to be here. I don't know if I can qualify as a you know, media visionary. I'm actually probably the least technical person at SAP, but I end up in these technical roles, and you'll know why, I guess, um, from my story. But before uh, we um, hear more about my background and what I do on a daily basis, I wanted to introduce our marketing associate, Nicholas. I can't pronounce his last name, but ch ch <laughs> why don't you tell us your last name? Um, so, <laughs> Nicholas uh, joined the team about a month ago and, and helps me a lot with uh, my project management at work, but tonight we have a special treat for you guys. We'll have a social contest so you get a better feel for what we do, and um, Nicholas is going to uh, tell everyone how the contest is going to work, and every person who participates is going to win something. So. So Care Showcase is one of the new uh, projects of SAP that, that I'll go into details about, but... Give the surprise away, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the um, so Facebook uh, care circles and Twitter my care circles. Uh, and stuff like in the tweeting. And then during the speech of uh, Leila, we can engage each other. Yes, and we'll have an infographic up so you can see what everybody's words are. So that's uh, one visionary tool, I guess, that, that Nicholas found. <laughs> um, OK. Um, so, um, I just, um, so I'll, I'll start by giving a quick background about myself, uh, mainly because I have to give this speech tomorrow at work, so I figured five minutes it will work, fit in practice on you guys, but basically, um, do what you love and the rest will follow. Um, those were the last words my father said to me before he's uh, airplane took off for the very last time. My father had grown up in Iran um, in a very different time than I. Um, during his time, the Shah of Iran was really obsessed by modernizing the country and um, welcomed every Western influence he could get. During my time, well, things were a bit different. I was a child of the revolution, and the Islamic government actually um, adopted very inhuman methods in establishing their authority, and, and a lot of limitations on women were placed. So my father's advice 
got me in a lot of trouble growing up <laughs> because, well, you know, I love to play soccer, but soon I discovered, okay, that was not appropriate for girls. I wanted to go horseback riding with my cousins. Uh, we had a house in the mountains, and um, soon horseback riding was um, also outlawed for women. Um, we had a beach house and I could no longer go swimming unless I could manage to do so in my long coat and scarf and, and shoes on. So um, pretty soon I discovered, huh, this was pretty lousy advice my father left me with. But there was one thing, um, and I didn't realize this years later till I was um, in my 30s, and an executive gave me the same advice that I noticed my father's last words had shaped my life and my career. because. Um, the one thing that I did love to do that the Islamic government uh, couldn't fully control and um, the traditional country that I was born in also appreciated in women was the art of, um, well actually can you guess what that was? It's a skill that every marketer needs. Anyone? <laughs> well, storytelling, right? Essentially that's what marketing is um, and social marketing, it, it's you know, just an extension of that. So I started to write stories um, about my life the way I wanted it to see it, you know. And sometimes um, I changed the facts or made the story, you know, make the facts more interesting, more engaging. Um, and soon all the kids in my middle school started paying me their pocket money for me to draft their school essays because, you know, I was always getting 20s, which were the <laughs> number, uh, the top score in Iran. And um, then, you know, afterwards I came to the U.S. and my first job here was to be a maid. Um, I worked for an attorney who had a pretty busy career. She had a husband who was a pilot and three unruly children at home. So um, she took me in and um, basically I did everything. You could say I was her project manager doing everything that the house needed, you know, cleaning, cooking for the kids, taking them to school. And um, I didn't really have any hopes of going to college at the time because I just arrived in the country and I could barely speak English and I didn't have any money. But um, she really encouraged me to, to pursue this and she told, um, so, so you know, she, she just mentioned a few universities and she's like, here's where I went, so I want to, you know, just try. So I applied and um, I wrote this essay to get in and, and surely that essay got me into university. Not only got me acceptance, got me a full uh, four year scholarship. And the storytelling and the writing continued to help me shape my life because um, through another essay contest, I won a trip to France. So I got to study at the Sorbonne and then moved on to Mexico. Went for a semester in conflict resolution in Cairo. And then all good things had to come to an end. Uh, you know, did a, finished with a master's in London, again, always through these essays and writing and being able to tell the story. So um, after finishing the master's, I worked in uh, France for, for LVMH. So they own Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy, Givenchy, a few of the top brands. And I basically worked on Creating those stories, um, you know, the, what Christian Dior mainly wanted to do in other countries and shaping those stories for those specific cultures. They call it internationalization or localization of the content. And, um, and meanwhile, after, you know, a few years of doing that, I was like, there has to be more to life than dealing with uh, irate people because they couldn't get the latest bag that matched their latest pants. And, you know, and uh, so I heard about this project. Um, that. Uh, it was called Imagining Ourselves. And they basically needed an editor who could come and um, publish this book um, uh, where we were, you know, doing a call for submissions from women all over the world in their 20s and their 30s. And the topic was, you know, what makes you feel empowered or just kind of showcasing what young women were capable of doing. Um, regardless of, you know, who they were. So the participants were, you know, the Queen of Jordan or, um, you know, a, a poor girl in Africa who didn't basically, couldn't even read or write, but she drew a story to submit for the book. So um, I interviewed via very visionary tools of the time, Skype, and um, got the job and came over. And, uh, and that was the year 2005. So in 2005, who remembers what happened? I was pretty instrumental to social media, 2005. Anyone? 
I think I'm just too old. Probably you guys were not even born, huh? <laughs> but, uh, well, Skype took off internationally and YouTube was launched. So with the launch of YouTube, and, and, and I used social media tools of the time to, to manage the, the, you know, the production of the book. And, uh, and we had this huge team, you know, it was all volunteers throughout the world. So um, also to help spread the word about the, the, the book, we used social media tools of the time. So we used Friendster, High Five, and basically I would just go and connect to people. And the project got so huge, like, you know, someone would write to me and be like, oh my god, I was at a yoga studio in Nigeria and I heard about this project. How can I submit? How can I participate? And uh, a lot of the women started submitting short films because, again, this was the launch of YouTube. And as I started to get all this interactive art in, I thought, well, this is really sad that we're going to limit this project to this book that's going to be sold on Amazon for $25.99, which means 90% of the participants of the book can't even purchase a copy. And, and because we were a nonprofit, we couldn't even buy them a book. So I said, OK, what, what can we do? And that was um, the idea of an online community came to my mind. I didn't really call it the online community, but we created like um, a virtual exhibit, if you must. And we had women submit their art in whatever format they wanted. And we would create venues for people to come and comment. And needless to say, the project, after only four months, we reached over one million um, community members. And we were featured on Yahoo's homepage. Um, and Google invited us to go on their campus. The United Nations um, uh, invited us to go and give a talk and present the project because it was all grassroots. It was all through women. Um, and so uh, one aspect of the job that I really enjoyed was the partnership development because I had to partner up with various organizations. And I thought, um, you know, after a year, it, it, it was a really rewarding project, but I discovered that life in California was very expensive and I could barely like, afford to eat uh, working for that nonprofit. And as great as this project was, I was like, all right, I need to make some money. <laughs> and um, um, I um, looked on Craigslist, I think, and I found a job at Hyperion Solutions. Um, it was for a partnership development manager. So I joined, and part of my job was to evaluate these partners. It was pretty much like when you apply for a job. They would apply to be a partner, and I had to review whether it makes sense for Hyperion to have them on board. And, um, and after looking at those profiles and having to repeat myself over and over and over again with the same questions, or hand-holding the partners that were like coming on board, but they were not big enough to be assigned an account manager, um, I put my head together with my boss at the time, who was very technical guy, and I said, hey, what can we do so that you know, these partners can benefit from each other's questions? And so the idea of a partnership or a partner community, we called it a partner console, emerged, and we kind of launched a, a paid community for the partners. So they had to pay a fee to be a, part, uh, to be a part of it, but then they could have uh, reduced the versions of the software, they could coordinate with each other, and that project uh, was doing well for about um, a year and a half before Oracle decided to purchase Hyperion. And my whole team had come uh, from PeopleSoft and Siebel and all these people, they hated Oracle. So I remember the day we, we got the announcement, actually one email started um, you know, circulating. And, um, and the email, it was two guys. Um, who you know ran into each other, and one guy says, "Oh, I heard, I heard, you know, you got uh, held at gunpoint last week." He's like, "Yeah, it's true." And he's like, "Well, what did you do? What happened?" And he said, "Well, yeah, this this thief came and said, give me all your money or give me your life." And so he said, "So, what did you do?" He's like, "Nothing. I showed my Oracle badge because you know everyone knows if you work at Oracle, you have no life and you have no money." <laughs> so. This was coming from HR, and you know, and I, so I was like, okay, it's time to make a career move. <laughs> um, and so I joined, um, and then by that time, I discovered there was this profession called community management, and um, and you know, social media still didn't exist as a as a job. But um, I joined eBay, and that was probably my first job as what you say, kind of a project manager. I had to manage. Um, 18 markets, 18 communities. So eBay.com had their own community, but each country had a, um, you know, their own community based um, in their country. And, and they were, you know, for the most part, independent because, you know, of course, how people behave in, in the French community is very different than an American community. Um, 
but um, they still, you know, we still wanted to have some kind of order because each country was doing their own thing and not really respecting the corporate ethos. And so my job was to really coordinate all of the activities and make sure that we, you know, we, we stay true to what eBay values were and what you know the purpose of eBay was and yet kind of respect those local cultures and and do marketing campaigns that obviously uh, worked best for those audiences. Um, so after eBay I joined Logitech and that's kind of when I um, I guess I was a visionary. I mean, it was 2009, who would have thought, but I had to, you know, the first thing I had to do was go to the chief marketing officer and explain why I thought a blog would be important, you know. And I mean, the first, you know, after getting on his calendar, basically the first time, he basically shut the door on my face and was like, we don't, we, we don't do blogs, we are Logitech, we're, you know, we're a Swiss company, and we, you know, we, we, we have real products. And, and um, so then I had to go to the director of community and show him what Facebook was and kind of help him log on and, and again push to, to help him understand what Facebook and what Twitter was. Um, but so, you know, I made some good progress because it went from like no one wanting to do any, uh, no one wanting to have anything to do with those things to everyone wanted to own it and they thought, they all thought we should have a community but then all the VPs, they each, you know, wanted to, to own it in their department. So it, it was kind of an interesting time. And um, after that, I um, joined Yahoo because an opportunity came that was really awesome. Uh, I love, one of my favorite communities is Yahoo Answers. Who here uses Yahoo Answers? Yeah, it's I I I I was really in love with it. But um, so Yahoo Answers was doing was declining in numbers because you know there was all all this competition going on, um, a lot of new Q and A Q and A space was really hot, and their readership was coming down. So I, I joined, and one of the first things I so I had to manage the you know new product releases for Yahoo Answers. Yahoo Groups and Delicious, which was an, it was a bookmarking site. And for those jobs, um, you know, so one of the first things I looked at was, okay, let's coordinate with our SEO team and see what are the keywords that are bringing people to Yahoo Answers. So I discovered that the, the majority of them were parenting questions, you know, people, um, who are becoming, you know, first-time parents, they don't have the same opportunities as, you know, our parents' generation. They happen to live always closer to their parents, and there was always some adult to go to for advice. And, and our generation is like, people are much, feeling much more isolated and living far away. So the importance of communities in parenting are becoming, you know, more and more um, evident. So, so I said, okay, so then we need to, we need to play with this topic more. And so I started a parenting blog on answers. And surely enough, that helped us pick um, our readership back up. Um, so, you know, I did that for about two years. I worked on multiple projects for, for Yahoo. And then I was approached by SAP. Um, and, you know, when they first came to me, I was like, well, I don't know. Yahoo is so fun. It's really parenting friendly, of course. Um, they get a lot of negative vibe here in, in the valley. People, people were always telling me, why do you work for Yahoo, you know. And, um, but, but it was a really great place to be, and they really respected um, mothers. So I, I appreciated those things because I had a six-month-old when I had to do three different products, and I had basically three different bosses because for, e for each product, you know, the product owner thinks you, um, you know, their product is um, the center of universe and you have to give them all your attention. I had a six month old baby so I had to fit in, you know, breastfeeding and, and all these things in between 6 a.m. calls and 7 p.m. So it was a great place to be. Um, so when I joined SAP, um, they were, uh, this was about eight months ago, they wanted to launch consumer products um, and that was really unique and new for SAP because they've been, you know, how many of you have heard of SAP? Okay, very, very few, but they're actually one of, it's the most humongous company I've ever worked for. They have about 65,000 employees, they're in 125 countries, and they, um, um, they've been around for 40 uh, plus years. So the fact that they wanted to enter the consumer space was very different, and I knew, I always, you know, I'm not really that great at what I do, I don't think, but I always pick 
pick topics or professions that are hot. So I always knew, okay, if, you know, community was hot, then social was the buzz. But now every kid coming out of college who knows how to use Facebook, they call themselves a social media manager. So then the competition is getting tough. Like people, you know, they, the salary level is lower because people are like, oh, social media, I can just get an intern to do the Facebook and, and the Twitter. And, uh, and it, you know, those of you have, who have any experience, you know it's not really quite that simple to build a community. Um, so I, I knew the next big thing was going to be mobile, and so I accepted the job because I wanted to be in the mobile space. And for, for in this role, um, I'm not really a project manager, so I have to be honest, but, but I do have to manage a lot of our marketing campaigns. Um, I'm, you know, what we call marketing lead, we, so in our team, we have five marketing leads, and each of us has two or three applications that we're responsible for the go-to-market plan, how we're going to take it, how we're going to market it to the consumers, how we're going to build a community around it, and, um, and how, you know, like how we're going to position it, and, and all of that. So um, with that, we can maybe talk about the next. Um, so we have, two, we have two applications. I can talk about Care Circles, the one we're about to launch, so you guys can really get a sneak peek on, on how we plan to go to market with it. And then I can also, if we have time after your questions, we can go and talk about um, Recalls Plus, an application that we launched nine months ago. So I have like the post deck, you know, like what, what works, uh, how did we market it, and, and basically best practices. So I wanted to show a video, let me see. Um, I can just, and I'm told we might not have sound, but this is a good example of uh, being, working in, you know, with new media. Basically, our, uh, we work in a division that's called the App House within SAP, and we're, we're like a small startup. We have separate offices in Los Altos. And we pretty much run like a startup. And much of what we do is kind of a mystery to the rest of SAP because it's, it's so different. And, and, and you know, one day we get a news from our chief marketing, I'm sorry, chief technology officer who's like, oh, I heard something about these care circles. Um, can you guys present? And by the way, I'm going to be in India. So just to give you an example, our product owner and I had to put this thing together in about uh, uh, basically, they told us at 12, oh, we shall want to see something by 5. <laughs> so we, uh, we were like, okay, and how are we going to present this? And, and the timing didn't work. So we just got together and we put the PowerPoint slides together. And, and thankfully, he's much more technically savvy than I, so he just made it into a video. And we kind of gave the story of Care Circles uh, through this video to him. And, and he was like, wow, this is the project I want to be involved with. Let's, you know. Um, and so I encourage you to just go to carecircles.com later and, and check out the video. But um, let me. So. And then, you know, as I go, you guys feel free to interrupt me and ask any questions you have because um, it's really. I didn't prepare for this, so. Um, so care circles. So I guess first let me tell you what care circles is um, and how I got involved. Um, on my first week at SAP, I was, um, you know, on the first day I joined, I was told our CTO wants one, one million downloads of Recalls Plus <laughs> by, uh, in three months' time. And during the interview, they had asked me, can you make a community of 100,000 within a year, which I said, oh, of course, no problem. I've you know, built communities, one million users. But uh, that was a little bit different for what I signed up with. So I got really nervous, and I had to work um, extremely long hours to, to meet that target. But I ran into the product owner of Care Circles, whose name was Fahim Ahmad. And at the time, the project was called My Child, because Fahim is um, one of our super employees at SAP. He opened something like 40 offices in, in Africa um, and, and the Middle East. And, um, and he um, basically wanted to quit SAP and go and focus on care circles because he has a son with fragile X. And he really wanted to do something to make a difference for those caregivers who, who are in the similar situations. So he had this project called My Child. He, he was going to leave. Um, and the executive team 
because they valued his work so much, they said, well, why don't you stay and tell us what this project is about, and maybe we can support you. And, and that's how my child was launched. So I ran into him on my first week on the job, and I just heard him talk about this in a, you know, in PowerPoint format, and it, you know, the, just kind of the concept of what he wanted to do. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be involved. Um, and um, and this, is the, this is the application I want to work on. So I went to my boss and I said, this is what I want to work on. He's, and he said, well, you've been hired to do Recalls Plus, but you know, I'll keep you in mind.